Back in 1979, Bob Seger scored a top 40 hit with his tune, Old Time Rock and Roll. You know, that music that kind of soothes your soul. But alas, it turns out that thanks to 2020 hindsight, so many rock songs from yesterday are now deemed as being hopelessly and utterly politically incorrect. Well, there was a fascinating list comprised by the website ultimateclassicrock.com recently. The article surveyed the number of rock songs from the past that perhaps never raised eyebrows when originally recorded. However, when one examines the lyrical content of these songs today, one wonders if any of these tunes would ever end up on a disc of vinyl due to that ever-knowing governor called political correctness. Now, full disclosure, I admit to being someone who doesn't always analyze the lyrical content of a tune as I tap my toes to the beat. Having said that, I found the list to be both surprising and revealing, especially since it involves some of the biggest names in rock history, from the Beatles to the Rolling Stones. Some more disclosure, while I take pride in being politically incorrect, I have to admit, when it comes to many of the examples highlighted in the article, even yours truly found himself raising a spocky an eyebrow. As the article notes, quote, perhaps not surprisingly, given Rock's perpetual obsession with sex, a lot of these songs deal with people who prey on underage girls or boast about treating their women badly. There are also many that reveal unenlightened views on race and homosexuality, areas where rock musicians have traditionally been on the progressive side of things, end quote. Now, while the list is far too long to analyze in its entirety, there are some highlights, or would that be lowlights? The oldest song to make the list is Chuck Berry's Sweet Little Sixteen from 1958. It makes the grade due to the creepiness factor. As the article notes, because rock was originally foreign about teenagers, we can forgive a lot of early rockers for singing about falling in love with underage girls, but we won't give Chuck Berry a pass for leering at the tight dresses and lipstick and high heels the girl in this song is wearing because Berry was already in his early 30s when he wrote it. Then there's a 1962 tune from The Crystals. The problem is crystal clear in the song's title. He hit me and it felt like a kiss. <laughs> Yikes. Moving along, there's that Elton John ditty, Island Girl, which was a number one hit in 1975. While it's a catchy tune to be sure, keep in mind that the lyrics are about a Jamaican prostitute in New York City who will, quote, wrap herself around you like a well-worn tire, end quote. It should be noted that Elton hasn't performed that song in concert since 1989. And check out Steely Dan's Everyone's Gone to the Movies, also from 1975. It's about a man who lures teenagers into his house and shows them homemade pornographic movies with intentions of seducing them. <laughs> Double yikes. There are also songs that don't make the grade today when it comes to the ongoing diversity is our strength mantra. That would include the Ray Stevens tune, Ahab the Arab, and Illegal Alien by Genesis, which features Phil Collins doing a Latino accent that ranks right up there with what one might hear in a Speedy Gonzales cartoon. Oh, speaking of illegal immigrants, I'm kind of surprised that my choice for most politically incorrect song from yesteryear is not on the list, namely Bomb the Boats and Feed the Fish from the Forgotten Rebels, which was in response to the boat people who fled Vietnam to Canada in the late 70s. Now, granted, the band claims the intent of the song was to parody redneck attitudes toward the boat people, but even so, as social satire, could such a song like this get recorded today with regard to, say, the Syrian boat people? In any regard, while the list does provide ample food for thought when it comes to the lyrical content of yesteryear's pop music, there is nevertheless some perverse irony at play here in terms of political correctness. Namely, when one looks at the rap music of today, with its liberal use of the N-word and anything that rhymes with mother effer, those lyrics are about as vile as it gets, yet songs from this genre seem to get a free pass. Yeah, I know I'm an old white dude who should shut his mouth when it comes to hip-hop nation, but even so, back in my day, 
at least politically incorrect tunes were presented with harmony and rhythm rather than with overt nastiness and profanity, which is to say, give me Island Girl over anything recorded by Lil Wayne any day of the week. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, you might have heard the Rebel has a brand new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.